Hi, I'm Allie from the Black Spruce Knitting Podcast, and this video is going to be about everything that I made in 2022. I was not going to make this video because I only made eight objects last year, or I only finished eight objects last year, um, but I thought it would still be fun to reflect on what I did make and to talk a little bit more about my making and sort of what I'm thinking about um, why I chose to knit the way that I did last year and sort of what I'm thinking for the year ahead. So it's not going to be a terribly long video. I also only have six of those eight objects with me. Two of them were gifted to my parents, um, but hopefully it's still interesting. I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna talk about these knitted pieces. I'll tell you about how much I've worn them, if I would have done anything differently, um, and just sort of how I feel about them overall. There won't be as many technical de details because I knit them a long time ago. If you want to hear more technical details, you can go back and watch some of my old podcasts because I think I've talked about all of these and sort of the making of them. Um, yeah, so uh, if you're interested to see, um, here is what I made last year in more or less chronological order. So the first piece that I have that I finished last year is the Wise Weed Sweater by Katherine Clark. And this was a test knit, which I did in Knit Picks palette. I have to say, I really haven't worn this because the fit is not great, um, which is my fault. I don't think it's the pattern. I was not knitting to gauge. And so I made the arm wells deeper than they should be. And so um, when I raise my arms, it sort of pulls up. So I haven't worn it that much and I actually did not finish weaving in the ends, which I would like to do because I wore this recently for a video and I was thinking about how much I love it. Um, I think it's a gorgeous pattern. It was a complicated but fun knit. I actually would maybe knit it again. Um, I think that my thing about it is that I knit it in Knit Picks palette because that was more affordable since it has so many colors. And, um, I, you know, I was doing a test knit and I didn't want to spend too much on like Jameson's and Smith, but, or, um, kind of like an expensive Shetland yarn, but I actually do wish that I had knit it in kind of a hardier yarn because I'm also sort of scared to wear it because I don't want something to happen to it because I don't know if Knit Picks Palette is a super hard wearing yarn. So if I were to do something differently, I would probably do a different yarn and also make sure that I split for sleeves a little bit higher. But I think it's an absolutely gorgeous pattern. Um, there are so many details that I love, like the short rows have their own little color work, which I think is so beautiful. And I actually left out some of the details, including pockets, and you can do a secret hidden message on the inside hem. So this is one that I would maybe actually someday like to knit again. But in the meantime, I think that soon I want to finish weaving in the ends. I did weave in most of them, there just are so many. But I would like to finish it so that this is wearable because, you know, I made it to be worn. So yes, the Wise Weed Sweater by Katherine Clark. I would like to try some of her other patterns as well because she just has beautiful, intricate um, color work patterns that really appeal to me. So my next two finished objects I don't have with me. One is that I knit the softest clouds cowl with some, I think, blue sky fibers alpaca that I had gotten for free um, for my mother. And I don't even know if I have a photo of this, so I won't talk about it too much. Um, but I will say that um, I think my mom really liked it. Um, it's really, the alpaca was really soft and she doesn't like super scratchy. I mean, she can't even do like a little bit scratchy for wool. So when I knit for her, I have to be conscious of that. And I also made the Gaston sweater by Ann Budd um, for my father, which I do have some photos of. Um, I think it's made out of Quince & Co. Lark, maybe, that I had gotten on sale. And um, this was a great pattern. It was a really fun knit. I think it fits him really well. The only thing is that the sleeves are too long, so he's been rolling them up. So at some point, I will undo them and re-knit these garter cuffs for him. He has told me that I think he kind of has proportionally short arms so that he always is rolling his sleeves up <laughs> um, but I want the fit to be perfect um, for him so at some point that's definitely a to-do 
but I'm really glad that I got to knit him a sweater. It was funny, we were on like a family Zoom with my brother who lives in California, who was like very impressed that I had knit the sweater that my dad was wearing. Um, I would like to knit sweaters for my mom and my brother at some point too. Um, so maybe this year uh, that will be a project. So yeah, I really loved this pattern. I would like to knit more of Ann Bud's patterns. I think it's just a well-fitting masculine pattern and I let my dad choose it. Um, when I'm knitting sweaters for other people, I always consult a lot. <laughs> so after that, I knit this, this way, <laughs> this, which is The Fumber by Marie Wallen. And I knit this in Nash Island Tide, which is yarn that I had bought in Maine. And this yarn is really special because the wool comes from feral sheep that have, I mean, they're taken care of by a shepherd, but um, they live basically alone on an island. And I think people come and visit them and take care of them and shear them as well. And there's a woman who spins wool out of it and makes these beautiful colorways. And I bought it at her daughter's shop when I was in Maine a few years ago and knit this Mary Wallen sweater, which is bottom up. And I love this. I wear it all the time. This yarn is pretty, um, I would say like rough and scratchy. It's not like uncomfortable, but it's, it's rough, but it's quite warm. Um, I was just mentioning in a video that this is like my favorite Marie Wallen motif ever. <laughs> I would definitely knit this again. It's in a Rowan magazine that I have to track down. Um, my only thing about this is that the neckline is getting a little bit floppy and I knit it according to pattern. I'm not quite sure why it doesn't have as much sort of like structure. Um, I'm pretty sure that this has short rows if I remember correctly. But for some reason, the neckline is just like <laughs> a little all over the place. So there is a chance that I'll go back and fix it. Like I could either re-knit the neckline or I could knit more. I have more of this yarn um, and this colorway I think is like seal, driftwood, and barnacle. Maybe I can't remember what the gray was called, but um, they all have very oceany names. I could also pick this up and make it a folded over neckline, which is really my preferred neckline, um, but we'll see, or I'll just wear it and not worry too much about it. But I really love this sweater. I wear it all the time, especially on cold days. Um, I love the way that there are some like, I would say almost gussets underarm, and I think it just fits really well. Um, yeah, and it's very warm and woolly. So, this was a great finish for me. Next was the sweater number nine by My Favorite Things Knitwear and I knit this in Barocco Mochi. And I have to say, <laughs> um, I didn't love knitting this. I think I thought it was a little bit boring. The Barocco Mochi is a blown yarn and it does have these like fun colors, like flex in it. Um, and it's very soft and lovely, but like, I just, I don't know. I didn't love knitting this. It's kind of a basic raglan. Um, it wasn't that interesting. That said, I wear this all the time. It actually, hopefully you can't see it, but it actually has a stain on it. Um, and so I need to hand wash it before I wear it more. Although you probably couldn't see it, but I like, I like it to be clean. Um, but I definitely, um, need to give it a little wash, but I wear it all the time. It is so soft. The Barocco Mochi is like a delightful fabric to wear. Um, I want, I really would like to buy this yarn again. Um, it is more of a mid-priced yarn um, than some other ones. And I love, I love this. It's just like a perfect, black sweater that I can wear all the time. Um, definitely not, again, like normally what I knit. I like to knit things that have more features usually, but it just works for me. Um, so I would definitely use this yarn again, and it's a perfectly fine pattern, but you know, it's, it's a basic raglan. I think I could probably wing this um, if I wanted to do it again. 
So yeah, not the most fun to knit, but very, very, very nice to wear. The next one is kind of a doozy because it's my wedding dress. Um, I used the Silvermine pattern by Stephanie Close. I modified it and I knit this in Shibui. I did hear that Shibui is going out of business and I almost went and bought some yarn, but then I decided I didn't really need to, um, but they're gonna stop making yarn. But this is my wedding dress. Oh my gosh, there's so much to say about this pattern. I think the most important thing to say is that I love this. I am so glad that I knit my wedding dress. It took me about five months and it's a really big part of why I didn't knit more objects last year. Um, there were a lot of periods of time during which I thought, oh, these like store-bought dresses look so lovely. Like maybe I should have bought a dress. I could have gotten something really cool. And when I'm looking back on it, I just am so glad that I made the decision to make my dress. Um, I, yeah, I modified this pattern slightly in a couple ways. The big one was that I added arms and I modified the neckline. I think fit wise, the only two things I would have changed is that I would have made the straps longer so that it had a deeper v-neck and I would have made the bodice a little bit larger because it has negative ease and it was supposed to have negative ease, but it was quite tight. Um, and I think a little bit um, more fabric would have been nice. I mean, I probably could have done the whole thing without the arms. I thought it was going to be cold, but then it was quite warm on the day that we got married in October. Um, we didn't have a wedding. We just got married on a walk. We took a hike um, with a photographer, but yeah i loved making this even when it was really stressful there were a couple nights that i was up till 2 a.m not even working on it just worrying which i don't think was super fun for chris but um chris was wonderful and incredibly supportive and cheered me on and was very very sweet during it but also was like you'll be able to fix the thing you're worrying about why don't you go to sleep um but it all worked out and it has these beautiful buttons and I don't, I don't even know. I think I'm gonna be thinking about this project for years because it was just like a really special thing to do. Um, I made a video all about it so I don't know that I need to like talk and talk and talk about it. But you know, it's a very long dress. Um, the the armpits are a little bit felted because I went on a hike and I was sweating while I was wearing this. But yeah, I feel really proud of myself for doing this. I feel like, um, I, you know, it definitely looks like a handmade dress, I think, but it made me feel special and wonderful and really cool to be wearing it on the day that I got married. Um, so I think especially now that I'm showing this now, this is going to get safely stored for some time until I decide what I want to do with it. I have thought about dyeing it so that I could wear it again. I thought about saving it. Um, I don't know what gender my children will be. I don't know if they will ever want to wear this or if it will fit them. Um, or I mean, even if I'll have children, I'm making an assumption because I would like to have children. But, um, I'm gonna put it away, let it sit for a while, maybe a year or two, and then I think I'm going to revisit it. Um, this fabric is so soft though. I probably should have bought more of the Shibui Knits Lunar because I would have, I would have liked to have made another <laughs> dress in this um, wool and silk. Um, maybe I'll go see if I can get a couple skeins for another dress before they're completely sold out. Um, yeah, this might be, this might be, I, I think, like my biggest knitting accomplishment. Um, you know, yeah, I'll talk a little bit more. I'll show you two more objects quickly and then I'll talk a little bit more about big projects and small projects and making and my thoughts about that. I have shown this sort of recently on a podcast, but this is a half pie shawl 
that I knit out of hand spun yarn from Emily C. Gillies and I still haven't woven in the ends <laughs> and I haven't worn it but I do love it it's so soft um, I'm having some curling issues and I got a lot of great suggestions on my podcast about what to do about that and so I think that um, at some point I will look at those and make a decision and um, you know get this ready so that I can wear it somebody said that it may have made more sense to do a crescent shawl. And in retrospect, I agree that might have made more sense. Um, if I were to do a project like this again, I maybe would have done a different shape. But I really love this. I love it, especially because it's hand spun and because I spun it so that it would knit the way that I wanted it to. And I feel like I'm having more control over spinning and more control over spinning for what I want to knit. Um, I still would like to take a spinning class and, you know, improve my technique because I would not say that I am a very technical spinner. Um, but yeah, I still think that it's a really nice piece. And next time I have a day where I work on finishing a lot of things, this will be, this will be on the list. And then my last finished object is this Rock Island line sweater. This was a bottom-up sweater by Jane Howarth, I believe. Knit out of Blue Sky Fibers, Woolstock Worsted, and Junction Fiber Mill Making Tracks for my husband, who wears it all the time. They really like it, and I think it's holding up quite well. Um, I wish that the neck were maybe a little bit closer. Um, you know, this is a bottom-up raglan and I think that it is not my favorite fit on Chris um, but I still think it's a great sweater it's got a cool broken rib pattern um, you could do a lot with the different colors I used this marled yarn and I think it looks very cool <laughs> um, yeah it was a good a good enjoyable knit and I am getting better at making sweaters for people who aren't me so is there anything else to think about it to we're sorry to say yeah my only thing is that i wish the, the neckline were a little bit closer um but it does look really good and it's holding up well to wear so far and i think it's pretty warm do you like this sweater chris says that they love this sweater <laughs> so yeah i'm gonna take a breath So yeah, that is what I made this year. I have a lot of unfinished objects, which maybe will be a subject for another video. I'm going to frog some of them and finish some of them. Um, but you know, it was a really different knitting year for me because I made the Wise Weeds sweater and this were both really time consuming. And the Wise Weeds, I think took me maybe two months, but this was five months of like pretty solid knitting. And I have been thinking a lot about how I knit recently. Um, I think that I enjoy taking on larger projects, not always, but often. I think that I am a process knitter. I think I've, I've known that for a while that I'm a process knitter. I don't knit necessarily for the finished project or the finished product. I mean, with this, obviously, like it, I wanted the finished product, but I picked a dress that I thought I would enjoy knitting as well. And that's kind of how I'm looking at projects when I'm picking something is like, first, do I like how it looks? Second, do I want to knit it? Third, do, do I think I would want to wear it? Um, so what that means to me is that I am not necessarily like filling in holes in my wardrobe. I was actually just watching Anna from the Brook Willow podcasts video about making like a really cohesive wardrobe and I was taking some notes but I've always been the type of person where I have a piece of clothing that I really like and then I wear it. Um, I don't think I'm necessarily super cohesive in my style. When I was younger I was very much part of like the punk subculture um, and it that was like a fun thing to kind of dress for but as I get older 
Um, I think I am getting more nature-y and kind of more sort of like, yeah, I don't know how one might describe it. Um, I have been told it is more earth mama. So, <laughs> but definitely like less um, black and denim, which is what it was when I was younger and more like shades of brown and green. Um, and so I think that you know, I can find things that like, I think I will enjoy wearing on my body, but I personally really just love the making of them. That is for me, <laughs> like what I'm most interested in. And that's kind of a chaotic way to live. There is no right way to make, there is no right way to pick what projects you're gonna make. Everyone is different. I think a lot of people enjoy having things that they love to wear, not, not just to make. Um, but that is who I am as a person, is that like, I do it because I like the feeling of the knitting in my hands. And when something is not as fun, for example, this piece was not that fun to knit, but I love wearing it. I am more likely going to choose to knit something that I really love knitting, um, rather than something that I will love wearing. Um, and I think maybe part of 2023 is about finding a balance and trying to pick projects really intentionally. I do wear pretty much everything I've knit, but I think because I am process oriented, it is part of the reason why I can spend five months knitting something that I will only wear once and feel good about it or spend two months knitting something and then not wear it and like still feel really good about it. Um, I hope that makes sense. I hope I am um, portraying myself accurately and, you know, making it really, really clear that I don't think there is a wrong way to knit. I think as long as you're enjoying it and not hurting anyone, <laughs> then you're doing it right. Um, so yeah, this year, maybe, maybe I will try <laughs> to make my wardrobe a little bit more cohesive. Um, but I know that whatever I bake, I'm just going to enjoy knitting. And so I'm looking forward to another year of making and another year of sharing it with all of you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you probably in a few weeks because I am knitting um, kind of monogamously, so one project at a time. So I think it probably won't be until February that I make another podcast. Um, but thank you for tuning in. If you are knitting something from the book Knits About, uh, Knits About Winter by Emily Foden and feel like joining our knit along, there will be a link to the Ravelry below. And yeah, happy making in 2023. Take care. Bye.